All right. Um, so no talk about microneedling here. We're doing an educational rapid match against the one and only Alexandra. This is kind of a sequence based off of the match I played against Eling, who's about 1900. So Alex has a feeder radio of I think 20, 2100, maybe 2000. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, she has like a feeder radio of about 2000. She's a woman feeder master. Um, so I'm like, you know, taking this seriously, obviously. And yeah, I'm, I'm also not entirely awake. So bear with me here. Okay, well, 1988 is a rating that I will say is close enough, at least in my personal opinion, to 2000. So let's, for all intents and purposes and YouTube, I'm, I'm going to say she's 2000. And if you guys disagree with that, it's fine, you guys. Y'all can argue about it in the comments. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put our bishop on the long diagonal. She's not playing a very scary opening, so I'm not too worried about having proper theory here. But then again, let's be honest, when was I ever caring too much about theory? I feel like you can get away with a lot in shorter time controls. All right, if she takes, we take with a pawn. We're gonna try to get our e4 push in. So I can play a move like queen c2 later, and if she takes, pawn takes. If the bishop comes in the center, I could just move over. So I'm probably going to play d5, I think. Um, or I'm going to play... The other option is to play something like knight e4, but I think I'm going to play d5 and just try to hold my center. So knight e5 is one move I'm considering. a3 is another. Alright, so the plan is to play d5 and then go knight to d7, maybe even take on c c3 and play bishop to e4. There's a lot of ways you can play the queen's indian and there's never really like a very strict correct setup or anything like that. Um, it's just sort of however you want to play it, you can kind of play it that way. As long as you, you know don't lose your pieces and stuff like that. It's all mostly fine. But yeah, I really just like D4 openings. I've talked about this before as well. Uh, they're just not really my vibe. They're really, really slow and they're super positional. None of which like I have a problem against, but these kind of positions are just sort of frustrating to play because you need to think a lot. <laughs> I'm even considering taking here. I'm gonna take here first. Slow opening, I'm just going to take Okay, she's G5. staying with the pawn. If I play bishop g5 and h5, h6, and I have to go back to f4, how much do we care though if, I, I would like to take with the pawn. Okay, let's kick the bishop up. I don't like what I did with my d5 pawn. Now my light squared bishop is going to be really bad, but because I have this pawn on d5, I'm gonna be trying to push c5 at some point. I'm going to try- I'm going to be trying to push c5 at some point. So far the position is clear. So f4, I can take the knight. I kind of like f4, but I don't think it's that good. Bishop f4 and then knight h5. Because I'm- what I'm worried about is my knight eventually getting kicked with f6. You know what? I am going to play bishop f4 and I'm going to let her take my bishop if she must. Coffee at this point isn't gonna help me. I did not get enough sleep. I'm like on four hours of sleep. Um, and it's totally fine. It's totally okay. I've played a lot of tournaments on four hours of sleep. I've never really played a rapid match against Alex on four hours of sleep. So this is the first time, this is the first time I've done that. You know, had a sleepless night. It's totally fine. Um, because of that, actually, it's probably better that we're starting out with a slower opening because it means I have a little bit of time to warm up my brain for anything a little bit more tactical. And you might be like, oh, that sounds so dumb. I'm sure you can play chess anytime. And it's true. But at the same time, you know, if you're starting out with a slightly easier opening to play, like I can always play queen e7 here. I can play rook c8. I can play rook e8. There's like a million moves I can make in this position and I won't get punish for any of them it's kind of good because it does mean that i have the luxury of playing really really simple moves and i don't have to overthink the position and that's also a really important factor when it comes to yeah, yeah, yeah important like famous last words it's also a really important factor when it comes to playing um 
your moves in a time control where you don't have infinite time because you can make moves like that really fast. Like I can just pre-move queen takes d6 even though it's a rapid game. Every minute counts, it's still a 10 minute game. With two seconds of increment, it's still a 10 minute game. And having any amount of time advantage is still a time advantage, right? So um, that's like kind of the way that I always think when I play games and on my opponent's time, obviously I'm also thinking constantly so for example in this position i know she's gonna try to go for c6 i have this idea of maybe going for bishop a6 going for the e2 pawn i think i'm gonna skip out on it though because i'm not entirely sure if i like ideas like queen a4 i can get my bishop to c4 but then it's like i only have one thing to attack so um i can also play rook c8 try to push c5 but then that gives me an isolated pawn structure and i don't want that so instead, I think I'm going to play rook to e7. And maybe try to go for the d e pawn this way. Yeah, I need to come up with some kind of plan here. Because, right, I mean, I, for now, I'm just developing my pieces. I, I need to move my queen, and I need to get this rook on a better square, too. Yeah, I think that's good. And then it always gives me the option of also playing rook to c7 in order to double rooks on a whim if I need to. So I'm just keeping my position flexible. There's no clear, um, correct, like, there's no clear or, there's no clear right or wrong plan in this position. And when there is no clear right or wrong plan, it's okay to play a little bit more, like, freely, I would say, and not overthink the plans. But playing d4 openings always results in stuff like this. I really don't like positions like this because it does mean it's harder to pressure my opponent. It's a lot harder when you are able to play a lot of moves and none of them are incorrect. It's a lot harder to also make it so your opponent can make mistakes, right? Because everybody can kind of play whatever they would like without punishment. And if that's the case, then everybody is going to be making moves without much punishment, so. I can play e5 at e4 at some point, but it's gonna give me an isolated pawn, so I don't love that. But yeah. Anyways, you're gonna hear me complain about d4 this entire match. But that's why rapid is so rough. Because in rapid, I don't get to just flag. I actually have to somehow win on the position, and I don't like that. It's a lot harder to win against d4 in Rapid. Sometimes when you're playing a higher rated player, they feel the pressure on them to make it interesting and to push. And knowing Nemo, she won't be very happy with the draw, so we can kind of let her have the pressure. Very drawish, there's so many pieces left. There are a lot of pieces left, but neither side has any weaknesses. I mean, c6 is kind of weak, but not really, because she can always put her bishop back. All right, so she has played uh, pawn to e3. Um, it does mean her light square is a little bit weaker. And also, it does mean I can potentially set up for like h5, h4 things because she doesn't have as much control on the king side anymore. However, the same problem will always stand. It's still a d4 opening and there's nothing I can really, really do. I can't be extremely, extremely aggressive in this position. So we're going to take it really slow and sort of see where it goes. Um, it is the first game of the day. Okay, so she is going to want to put, she is going for the c5 push. I'm tempted to play rook d1, push, take, take, and then just grab a pawn if she does. But I don't like moving my rook off of a semi-open file, that feels wrong. I guess I take pawn takes I could already take. I can also just kick her rook out of there for now. I would say this position is just super balanced. We have both about the same amount of space. We have both of like half open files. We both have ideas of she wants to push e4 potentially. I want to push c5 potentially. Everybody has kind of the exact same ideas. We're trying to make some sort of pawn breakthrough. We're trying to get out of this really, you know, tight boring middle game positioning thing so um one of the key things here is to actually not try to make your position worse <laughs> so what you don't want to do is try to push c5 without enough preparation or try to push for her try to push e4 without enough preparation or um there's no point in making you know like 
super egregious moves like h4 or like playing things like a4. So it's a lot of chess right now that is just like super slow, super, you know, kind of dry, really. And for example, bishop to h3 obviously attacks this rook and I can just move it to e8. And if she plays bishop g2, this is giving me a sign. She is okay with a draw. As the higher rated opponent, if this game was rated, I would still be okay with a draw because honestly, this position is freaking boring and I don't want to play it anymore. It's been like a whole five minutes and I'm done. I'm ready. I'm ready to go home and play some bullet against Alex instead. But for the sake of content and for the sake of YouTube, I'm going to push this game for a win. Um, because that is what people would expect me to do. And I am going to take back my own advice and start pushing my pawns and destroying my position a little bit because I am going for a win. So let's go. <laughs> Yay, hooray for that. This is the kind of stuff that my coach would be so annoyed at me for in a tournament game if I started doing stuff like this. I have lost numerous games in my life for because I was playing for a win in a position where I have no business playing for a win. And he's like, why didn't you just take the draw? And I'm like, it's because I wanted a win. So we're gonna play for a win. I don't actually like my h5 move that much, but at least it did make her play h4. She is now threatening knight to b5 um, with this really fancy fork idea. And this is, a, you know, a pin. And she thinks I won't see it. So I'm going to move my rook over. And um, yeah, once again, it's just really hard to play these positions for a win because there's not... A lot that I can play for. I'm just trying to make calculate and make sure it's all good. So if b5, I get to play c5, obviously. If she moves her knight, I'm probably going to just play bishop to d7. My bishop doesn't do a lot on b7, um, so there was never really any point of me putting my bishop there. And here I think I'm gonna play bishop to g4. Maybe trying some potential b5. Because then if she pushes, okay, let's go. I'm also going to pick up the pace a little bit because I've been a tad bit slow. So now what I really want to do is queen here, play bishop h3, maybe knight g4. And for some reason, I am playing this position really aggressively for an attack. Where once again, I don't think I would recommend this to somebody who plays d4. I would recommend you guys to just take the draw, take the repetition, call it quits and be like, hey, I recognize that this is a really slow draw e4 position. I mean, d4 position. It's totally fine. You're allowed to do that when it comes to d4 positions. You're completely, completely allowed to do so. There is nothing that will bring you shame, I guess. I, I don't really know. So I'm still trying to push b5 and put pressure on the d5 pawn. She has her pieces pointed towards my king, but I don't see how she's gonna open it up. But now she really wants to play b5. I play this, takes, she gets the d5 pawn. So I don't really like that. Um, okay, so b5 is really annoying. I mean, there's a lot of moves here that are actually really annoying. I kind of really don't want her to play b5. So it might be good to be able to set up. No, it doesn't even really set that up. All right, I'm just going to play rook to c8 because if b5 that I play this takes, rook takes. Here, 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 here. Yeah, that's pinned, so it's fine. Oh, she's going to go for a5 now. If she goes for a5, I'm just going to play b5 and then go attack on the king's side. So that I think I'm okay with. Now that I am dropping down to about three minutes on the clock against her four minutes, um, I just want to play a little faster. Yeah, like I said, this is not tournament chess. My coach would have been very okay with me just being like, yeah, this is a draw. You know, you're going to lose some rating points against somebody a little lower rated, but don't worry about it. A draw is a draw and stuff like that. I thought you were being solid and letting her push. I know, but I changed my mind because I think this is a good opportunity for me to push. I am okay pushing games for a win, even though I know I shouldn't. It's like, kind of fun sometimes, you know? Chess played at the highest level is oftentimes a draw. I'm 
I'm gonna take actually. I'll play that, go here. Maybe get to push that too. Kind of fun losing a drawing game, it's true. Yeah, it's true. I'm sure everybody has lost drawn games before. It only gets more and more painful as you do it in tournaments. Just slowly making a plan. Um, okay, let's bring in the other rook as well. Now we have a target. Ooh, trying to push, eh? Alright. Draws... Suck. I hate draws a lot. I also have a very personal vendetta against draws. Like, I do not like draws. I don't like drawing in chess. It's a lot more fun to play for a win. So all of those things combined, I'm like very okay pushing this for a win when I shouldn't be. And I say that like I'm so convinced I am able to win. I am. I do not even have a better position. I don't currently have a better position. I should not be playing this for a win. Um, like if I go here, there's this. And then if I go here, there's that. Yeah, like, I don't even like my position. Ugh, why am I like this? Why do I do stuff like this? No, I'm not waiting for a blunder. This, these games are too fast to wait for a blunder. I would try to play something like that. But there's still a rook here. You know what? I am gonna go here. So I'm down two whole minutes. It's time for me to play a little faster. I'm more likely to blunder here. I'm the one defending my B-pawn. Although if she takes, I guess I got a pass pawn, but she should put her, whoa. And then maybe bring the knight out. I, I think it's still good, because now I have a target. Okay, let's go check. And then, can I do anything with this rook? Is there any da damage we can cause, like rook here? It's not that bad, but let's try. I guess she just goes here. No, because I go there. I want to double up my rooks. Pre-move? I was not trying to make that pre-move. So she's trying to play this, which threatens uh, checkmate, obviously. Um, and it's something that I don't like a lot. So I think I'm going to play a rook here. And if rook takes here, knight here, I can play this. And if this, I get to take that. And if here, I get to go here. So it's... Or I can take, I guess. A lot of tactics. I don't mind this too much anymore. If she, if she's willing to swap off rooks with me and I get to keep my b-pawn, I will at least have a pass pawn in this endgame. So if I take, queen takes, knight takes, queen here... Then how do I fend, defend my pony? Oh, I go check. Queen takes. Take. Take. Easy. Unless I miss something. Then it's not easy. Check. Oh, that's actually a really good move by her. Wow. Yeah, that's a really good move. Um, nothing I could do about that. So now she is up a pawn. I missed that in-between move. I super missed that in-between move. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm coming. Honey, I'm home. Okay, so I want to check her, but first we must take away this escape square. And she sees that she's in trouble. And she's not letting me play this, which is sad. Um, but I will still play here then. And... We will just block the check. Alright, next time we're just gonna take the goddamn draw. I don't like where this endgame went. Uh. I did already say that. I did, I did. Oh, if I had time. Ba, ba, ba. This song's perfect for this. Where did I go wrong? Well, except I know exactly where I went wrong. 
<laughs> Playing for the win was the mistake. Wait, here, 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 here. Okay, here, 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 here. It's a draw. And if this one, I have to remember to take this first. Okay, she didn't try it. There was one more trick there. If she played that and I took this pawn, she had king here and she would have promoted. No, it's not winning. It's a draw. It's uh, These are corner pawns and when you play corner pawns, it's always a draw. Well, if you can get your king ahead of the pawn, it's always a draw. All right. Well, I will take a draw because like I said, <laughs> I, I played for a win expecting to not do well. So, you know, the best played games... Oh well, that's fine. I apologize to all of the believers. I played really poorly. Ha! <sighs> I'm bummed. Oh well. She defended really, really, really well, which is great. All right, that just means I have to super focus on this game to tie it. Oh my gosh, she had this. I'm so lucky she missed it. Jesus Christ. All right. It's fine. <laughs> We're allowed one mistake, one major mistake per game. She definitely did not expect me to make that mistake. I can go here if this, I get to play that. Damn, I'm still so pissed about last game. I feel like I did such a good job and then I just missed F5 when she played it. Like I knew it was just one of those positions I needed more time in. Just disappointed in myself, honestly. Oh well, on to the next one. Yeah, I do need to save myself more time for the end. I definitely do. I'm very well aware of it. This position is a little bit more... Uh, what's the word for it? Like... Open than the previous D4 opening we played, which was an... Also a D4 opening, but that was a Queen's Indian, and this is like a Nimzo Indian that I... I don't really know how to explain like, the difference in the positions, but... Um, like, she doesn't have a bishop on g2, so she doesn't have g3 pushed up, so I have a little bit more chances. I'm gonna go here and then play this, go here. And then I'm really gonna push for c5. When she moves her knight away, because then she won't have knight b5. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this stuff, which I'm not a fan of. So I might just want to push c5 straight away. And then if that, I just go back. All right, let's try this. It's the hanging pawn structure that I was talking about from last game. I mean, the first game. So I want to keep my bishops. I'm going to play queen uh, queen b6. Play this, then try to take. Okay, so she wants to play this. If I go here, pawn takes, this is with tempo. So if I go here, the bishop has to move. And then if I play that, there's still this. Alright, I have to do a lot of calculation. I really wish I could have pushed d4. But there's all of that stuff, so it sucks. Um... Hmm... Alright, I'm gonna go...
go here. No, I don't like that. Here, here, here. I have to find something really quick because I'm running out of time again. Why does this always happen when I play Rapid? I hate Rapid so much. I hate Rapid so much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> YouTube's gonna learn of my disdain for Rapid for sure. Anything longer is just... No, I don't want to lose the pawn. Well, I can always just take this. I mean, how bad can it be? It can be pretty bad, actually. I really want to hang pawns! Hmm, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna run out of time again. I struggle with longer time controls so much. Um. Theming up. It's true, I hate rapid so much, I just bleed time to blitz. It's a fact. So I have a worse time. Um, I have wor I have, I'm worse on time. I have a slightly worse pawn structure. All in all, I don't like this situation at all. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I want to be in that situation either, so... I wish I had more time to calculate all this bullshit. If this was Blitz, I would have taken it straight away, but because it's Rapid, I'm so scared she's setting something up. I feel like it's just a free pawn, no? Because she can't play B3. Alright. I am gonna just take... Dude. I am overthinking this because it's rapid. I need to just play faster. It's it. There's no way that's not just a free pawn. <laughs> Cause it's rapid. I'm like, oh, she's tricking me. <laughs> but I don't think it's she's tricking me. I think it's just a free pawn. Every time she drops a pawn or something, I'm spending like two minutes of thought on it when I should just be capturing it and being like, Ah, it's fine. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe I'm getting in time trouble in Rapid. That's so bad. That is so bad. It's just the free pawn. Come on, I can do that. <laughs> I can just take it. All right, so I can't take it. That doesn't look really good. This is coming. This is the weakness. I don't want to... I don't really want to trade. Oh, but actually that's fine because then we're attacking. Bishop b3 is interesting. Knight c4 is interesting. What else? If I play bishop e3. Mm. What about knight c4? I like knight c4. Although. Hmm. I can also take... Like, this is just a free pawn, right? Now I'm like, gah. Like, now I don't know if it's a free pawn anymore because I'm way overthinking this. Oh, gosh. I'm sure it's just a free pawn. It's fine. <laughs> it's true. It's not free. It actually cost me my sanity. These are some high EV pawns. <laughs> I can't tell, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, these are the thoughts that go in my head when I play classical. Except they were way worse. In classical, I just gaslight myself into thinking I can't capture this pawn. I've had a lot of conversations with my friends about this and my coaches and they're just like, bro. <laughs> can you just play chess, please? <laughs> All right, I can play here and take. Is that complicating things? I am going into a pawn endgame. I mean, I'm going to a peace endgame. Being up with my time here. I, I mean, I'm second guessing myself so much. So much. I saw you all the time. So I'm playing this because I don't want to take the knight because I want to keep my pair of bishops. Um, so if I have the option, I'm going to swap off the queens 
and then play bishop b3, play bishop a4, play bishop c6. So I get to keep my bishops because I have a worse pawn structure. So my extra pawn kind of makes up for that pawn structure. But if I was down the bishop pair, it's probably going to go back to equal. So I'm hanging on to all of the advantage that I possibly can in this position. But fucking hell, I hate rapid. Sorry to all the raiders that came in. If you guys play rapid, rapid's great if you're trying to improve in chess. I'm totally not overthinking this. I am so not overthinking this. I'm so overthinking this. It's fine. All right, I'm going to play here. I'm just going to make sure that I don't get checkmated and everything's protected. I am okay with that. I'm going to play bishop here. And when rook here happens, I will go here. And when rook here happens, I will go here. And then when rook here happens, I can take this. And if she ever takes, I will have all of this stuff to worry. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to calculate it right now. We do not need to calculate until the very end. I am not Hikaru. I can't calculate that far ahead. We're just going to make, objectively speaking, okay moves. Fuck that. <laughs> we are most definitely not Hikaru. I do not have Hikaru's level of calculation. So I want to play this. Thanks, Jim, for the 15 months. Thank you. All right, so if here I get to go here, but then there's this. Then I will have to take, and then if Bishop takes, I get to play that. And then I threaten that. I'm actually going to play g6. If she plays this, I get to go here. But if I play here, she'll go here. Um... Because if I played this... Wait, no, she didn't have it. I don't know what I was calculating then. Alright, fuck it! I'm just gonna play Blitz. Oh, we're out of Rapid. <sighs> do I even need to play that? Why do I just want Rook 2 onto an open file? Oh, there's this, I guess. What if I play Bishop here? There's that. Oh no, this is fine. Centralizing pieces is always good in, in the end game. I would play chess so much better if I was not sober, but I'm way too tired to be drinking. I'm gonna fall asleep if I drink. I I super overthink in chess <laughs> when it's not bullet. Ah, why am I like this? Okay, so if here I can have something like that. I can also just take right now and give her doubled pawns, but I really like my pair of bishops. I'm sure she does as well, so... Since she also likes her pair of bishops... I like my pair of bishops too. Pair of bishops in this position is probably more valuable than doubling her pawns, because I'm already up a pawn, so I'm just playing this for an endgame. I mean, playing this to win the endgame. Oh no, here, here, here. Doesn't quite work. So if I go here, there's that. There's this, there's this, there's this, there's this. So I should play this. Or I should play... Oh, but there's bishop e3. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. I'm just gonna play this. Stop overthinking. Play simple moves. Stop overthinking. Play certain simple moves. Oh, no, I'm getting in time trouble again. Oh, fuck that. Bro, who the fuck knows what's happening? This might as well be gambling. Like, seriously, I, I don't fucking know. 
What? Oh. That's valid. How do I keep blundering? Yo. Check. Takes, 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 takes. Fuck it, let's go. We ride. No, every time I say that, it's usually bad. That- I need to stop justifying moves by saying we ride. God, this was the hardest game of my life. At least in the last three years. <laughs> hey, see, Josh, thank you so much for a prime. I have given up on being educational. This is, this is... All, all pretenses of educational are out the door. I, I overthink everything, especially when I try to explain my moves. Fuck that. 